In the headlines, protest as gunmen kill 12 in Plateau State. Bandits kill three, 23 in Fresh Kaduna village attack. Court dismisses money laundering charge against former Attorney General of the Federation, Mohamed Adoki. And lastly, away from Nigeria, world's biggest election kicks off as India votes. Hello and welcome to the news update on Trust Television. My name is Martia Umar. Thank you for joining. Uh, gunmen have again attacked the Tilpat Pushed community, Mango local government area of Plateau State, and killed 12 persons. It was learned that the attack leading to deaths of the victims occurred in the late hours of Thursday. The attackers also left several persons injured with property, including the homes of the villagers set ablaze. The chairman of Lo Mango local government area, Marcos Agoe, confirmed the latest killings in just on Friday. The spokesman for the Plateau State Police Command, Alabo Alfred, has yet to confirm the incident, but reports said command headquarters in just that the security operators have been deployed to the affected community. Gunmen had last week killed no fewer than 10 persons in Madong, Mushu and Kopnali villages in the Bokos and Mango local government area of the state. And at least 23 people have been reportedly killed by bandits who attacked the Ongwedonko community near Dongon Dawa district in the eastern part of Bernangwari local government area of Kaduna state. Although the police authorities in Kaduna are yet to confirm the incident, but a community leader, Zabairu Abdurahu, said bandits in large numbers invaded the community on Wednesday night. And during the invasion, Abdurrahouf said bandits started shooting sporadically to scare residents. And in the process, more than 20 persons were shot to death. He disclosed that while five people sustained varying degrees of injuries from gunshots, some of the residents are still missing after the attack. Now, Sansani town quarters of Sansani a chip dump was thrown into confusion and mourning as unknown gun men killed chief of Sentani area of Taraba State Al Haji Abdul Matalib Jakada inside the palace at about 9 p.m. on Thursday. The gunmen, many numbers, rode on motorcycles into Sentani village and kept their motorcycles distant from the palace and silently entered the palace and gunned down the monarch. Musa Sansani, a resident of Sansani town, said they heard sounds of gunshot but never knew where it was coming from. The late chief was abducted two years ago along Jalingo Wukari Road on his way to Sansani by kidnappers and ransom was paid before his release. Killing off the chief of Sansani chief Don brought the number of traditional rulers killed by gunmen in the state to about seven in the last few years. Nataraba State Commissioner of Police Command has yet to speak on the death of the monarch. And still on security, the authority of the Nigerian Army on Friday morning released the monarch, Priest Clement Ikolo, and declared wanted a few weeks ago over the killing of 17 military personnel that were killed in Delta State. It specifically said, although it has not exonerated anybody regarding the incident, but decided to release the monarch after intervention of highly placed personality in the society. The military high command had launched a manhunt for the arrest of those who perpetrated the dastardly act, the development that has made residents of Okwama to desert a D community. Shortly after the manhunt, the military declared Arthur Ekbekbo a professor at Dawei Dennis, by Kriki, a Dewu, Daniel, and Omugwana, okay, who is also known as Omegbami, as a sole suspect uh, to, that were wanted by the army. And to just by way of emphasis, to thank 
the Nigerian military for the professional way they have handled this matter. Uh, it's a difficult matter to handle the uh, gruesome murder of 17 officers and men uh, requires and continues to require the detailed investigation that is being carried out. Uh, but I would like to emphasize that uh, the king has been treated in a professional manner. Access to medicine, uh, Bible, and other comforts are made available. I haven't said that. My name is uh, Major General of the Monitor Director and the Public Relations. And, um, on behalf of the Chief of Army Staff, I would like to welcome the distinguished Secretary, members of the Home Church, and of course, not forgetting your spouse, who is our important um, event. I would really like to welcome members of the press. They've been with us since just uh, the past few weeks, uh, since we began the Chief of Army Staff uh, first part of the Thank you for your residence. The 90th National Executive Council meeting of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, ended on Thursday with a strong resolve to unite the various contending camps and rebrand the party to its return into power in 2027. While part of the 15-point communique read by the PDP National Publicity Secretary, Debo Olugwagba, predictably took a swipe at the APC-controlled federal government, it emphasized the PDP leaders' new resolve to ensure early preparations for the 2027 general election. The report. Neck charges all organs, leaders, critical stakeholders, and indeed all members of the PDP to close ranks. Put aside every personal or group interest and work together in the overall effort to reposition and turn the PDP to power at the center in the interest of Nigerian people. Next, judges all of leaders, critical stakeholders, and indeed all members of the PDP to close ranks, yet to join every person or group interest and work together in the effort to reposition and return the PDP to power at the centre in the interest of the Nigerian people. NEC also commends members of the PDP with particular reference to the youths and women for their courage in resisting the antics of the Divisive and Anti-People or Progressives Congress, APC, in its desperation to emasculate the opposition and foist a one-party state. NEC expresses serious apprehension over the spread of acts of terrorism and violence, including the escalated cases of mindless killing, mass abduction of innocent Nigerians, and marooning of communities in various parts of the country. NEC condemns the insensitivity, nonchalance, incompetence, and arrogance in failure of the APC administration, which continues to conduct itself in a manner that shows that it has no iota of interest or commitment towards the well being of Nigerians. NEC further demands that the federal government review all policies and programs which are stifling the economy with a suffocating effect on the lives of citizens, including the increase in price of fuel without cushioning in fact, hiking electricity tariff, increased taxation and implementation of adverse fiscal policies. NEC also demands that President Tinubu should immediately reject his economic team to bring in persons of proven integrity and incompetent without by our interest to assist in repositioning the economy. NEC, after due consideration, demands that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu urgently convene a special National Security Council meeting to proffer a holistic solution and measures to curb the disturbing insecurity with its attended negative consequences on national life. But still talking political parties, the National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, Felix Moka, on Thursday reiterated that the ruling party will not honour the initial court order affirming Abdullahi Ganduje's suspension as national chairman. He also reiterated that the national chairman of the party was not being served any summon concerning the initial court order restraining him. 
Mocha said FAC has thrown their weight behind the recent Kano Federal High Court ruling calling for a stay of the order. The political drama in Kano had taken a fresh twist on Wednesday after the Federal High Court presided over by another judge, Justice A.M. Liman halted the purported suspension of Gundrije by his word, executives, and Dawa Kintofa local government area of the state. The ruling was given after Gundrije filed an expert motion seeking to enforce his fundamental rights to a fair hearing. Still on judicial matters, Justice Iyang Echo of the Federal High Court, Abuja, has dismissed the money laundering allegations filed against a former Attorney General of the Federation, Mohamed Adoke, by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, ESCC. Delivering a ruling on a no-case submission filed by the former AGF, Justice Echo held that the EFCC failed to establish a prima facie a case against Adoke. Echo further said that the ESCC did not provide any evidence to prove the essential elements of the offence against the first defendant, Adoke. The ESCC had charged Adoke and Adabubakar Ali, a property developer, in 2017, alleging money laundering to the tune of 300 million naira. The immediate past governor of Anambra State, William Biano, on Thursday filed in his bid to squash the 4 billion naira theft charges filed against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Justice Yang Echo of the Federal High Court in Abuja dismissed the preliminary objection filed by Obiano to challenge the powers of the EFCC to try him. The judge, however, granted Obiano's prayer for the release of his passport to enable him embark on a medical trip. Justice Echo, while adjourning till June 27 for the commencement of the trial, said Obiano must return his passport to the court on his return from his medical trip. Obiano, who was arraigned in January 24, faces nine counts charge bordering on the theft of Anambra State security votes to the tune of 4 billion naira. Now the House Committee in Ports and Havo on Thursday ordered all terminal operators and Nigeria Ports Authority agents to forward to eat all consensus agreement and development of plan amongst other documents in line with the concession agreement with the Nigeria Ports Authority. Chairman of the committee, Nolim Anaji, gave the order during an interactive session with terminal operators in Abuja. The report. According to Naji, the move aims to promote efficiency and effectiveness while also achieving optimal results in the operations of terminal operators. In her contribution, the Registrar and Chief Executive Officer, Counsel for the Registration of Freight Forwarders of Nigeria, Urunta Chinyere, advised that all terminal operators should adopt electronic mode of payment to reduce human interface in the operations. 13 operators who attended the hearing pledged to cooperate with the committee to boost revenue generation in the sector. I also want to know if you are, the concession agreements have been renewed, expired and renewed, because I'm aware that some have expired and the process of renewal. So I want to know how it was renewed whether the, the relevant uh, government agencies that approved the renewal. So these are the, some of the documents we want to have. So what we are asking, with the, their model, a voice, there is no human interface at all. So it doesn't give room for leakages and shortfalls. So we are requesting, and most of our stakeholders are here, if they can adopt that model, like every other one, uh, five-star, Five Star, GDL, Bua, and the rest of them, many of them, if they go by that PTML model, I think our revenue will be much enhanced than now. In another development, the Chairman House of Representatives Committee on Power, Victor Mokolo, says without a change in tariff, the industry lacks capital to bring the needed change in the power sector. Speaking at a meeting with stakeholders in Abuja, 
Mokolo noted that the increase in tariff has been due since 2022 following the population expansion in Nigeria. He noted that the issue of banned A or B is not to discriminate against anybody, adding that errors being covered are beyond what they had estimated in the past. Okoro said as a result, they needed to expand their own networks, which requires more money. The industry lasts the capital to bring the needed change. Of course, with the population explosion in Nigeria, the areas being covered is beyond what I have estimated in the past. Because they needed to expand their own uh, networks, they also need more money. The chairman said although the committee has not fully agreed with the stakeholders, they however want to get more input and explore the possibility of whether gas can be sold in Naira, which is currently sold in dollar. He stressed that while the committee cannot stop the increase in electricity tariffs, the decision can be decided by the House of Representatives. And they also stress to the installations in terms of security, call making the overhead to increase. So these are all the things I've said. But the committee have not fully agreed with them. Uh, we're not saying yes, we're not saying no. Let's get more inputs. The committee intends to meet with discos again next week for further deliberations. You're watching the Trust TV News update at this hour, coming up shortly. Amidst escalating food crises and general cost of living, Nigeria loses 30% produce post-harvest. Details of the story and more. To stay with us. Back to the news update. Before we proceed, let's take a look at our top stories again. We told you earlier that protests as government killed 12 in Plateau State. And bandits killed 23 in fresh Kaduna village attack. And moving on to more stories, the Biosa State Government on Wednesday received a donation of six water ambulances from the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, and the Global Alliance for Vaccine and Immunization. They gave, uh, they gave it as support to the state health sector in order to boost immunization and primary care delivery services in its riverine areas. Receiving the boats at the government jetty in Yanagua, the state governor, Doya Diri, while appreciating UNICEF and Gavi, noted that the ambulances will help in delivering quality and prompt health care services in the affected areas. Trust TV's Friday, Ibimawe, Peter completes the story. The governor, who was represented by his deputy Lawrence Richardmo, assured the agencies of effective use to complement the drone drug service system operated by the state. You know, by as I said, uh, about 70% riverine. And so these uh, uh, amb water ambulances are actually a shot on the arm for our commitment towards getting help to the people where they live and getting the people to help where they live. And so what that has added to us is additional impetus, a little more fuel to our engine of delivering primary health care and immunization services. The deputy governor further revealed that the state in its quest to provide quality health care to its citizens is creating a department of nutrition and seeking the partnership with UNICEF in terms of providing a field office for the state for better coordination of our policies. Biasa State is the only state that the, the drone system to deliver vaccines are consumable to our various health centers. But with this ambulance, it will make our job much easier and more effective. So we are grateful and believe that uh, by our sense and glory to God. On our part, the UNICEF country representative in Nigeria, Christian Madrid, commended the state government for her milestone in the healthcare delivery services in the state as appeal for more citizen involvement in immunization of children in the state. We appeal to all the communities, to all the local authorities at the, at the very, very um, primary uh, community level all the traditional leaders, all the authorities to commit, to make a change, to revert these numbers. It's not huge numbers, you know, because in some other places we, we are talking about millions of children. So we would dream, we, we want to dream and hopefully Bayelsa will be the first state that can say 
we have 100% of our children immunized. The deputy governor also called for better nutrition for children as well as adequate immunization to boost their health care status. From Yenagua, Friday, Ibimobo with Peter. Trust TV News, Yenagua. Amidst escalating food crisis and general cost of living, Nigeria loses 30% of its farm produce post harvest. A challenge that is worsening food insecurity across the country. Nigerian Stored Products Research Institute and its partners organized a post harvest conference to find lasting solutions to the challenge as the largest economy of the African continent faces growing food shortages. Ibrahim Ismail has more on this report. Nigeria loses a whooping sum of 3.5 trillion naira annually to post harvest losses, according to a report by ActionAid in 2021. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture says the challenge is one of the factors contributing to the current food crisis in the country. Agriculturalists, researchers and top government officials converge in Abuja to find a lasting solution to the ever-changing landscape of challenges facing the agriculture sector. The problem is definitely big because if you look at the percentage of loss uh, if you take, for example, a particular commodity and we are producing maybe 7 million metric tons and they tell you 20% of that is lost to post-harvest, then you can calculate the loss, not just to the farmers but also to the country. Now that is one side of the story. The other side of the story is that because of that loss, demand will not change but supply has changed, which means price will go up. So these are the issues and uh, of course seeing how the food crisis in the few months that has passed was uh, felt by Nigerians. We have always known that food security is the number one agenda of the country and uh, the president is totally committed to it. Through collaboration and partnership, the Nigerian Stored Products Research Institute expresses determination to address post-harvest loss as it holds the first ever post-harvest connect in the country with the theme scaling appropriate post-harvest solutions for sustainable food and nutrition security. The Nigeria as a government, we are ready to partner with all international, regional and national agencies and organizations that have solutions to reduce post-harvest losses, either at the technical level, at the financial level, or at the social level. That's just the main, main message. Let us connect and work together. It starts from grains, which will have 20% loss, right up to the worst aspect, where you have the fruits and the tubercles, where we have 50% loss. So the statistics is there. We all know the statistics. On the average, we make it 30% because when we put all the crops together, you are hitting at 30%. And 30% is by no means, you know, a very, very serious loss to any nation. Okay. Remember, remember that these farmers hold these crops in trust for the country. The event featured paper presentation, exhibition and unveiling of an effective grain protectant patented by the Nigerian Stored Products Research Institute. Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News, Abuja. And for happenings outside Nigeria, millions of Indians began voting Friday in a six-week election. That's a referendum on Narendra Modi, the populist prime minister who has championed an assertive brand of Hindu nationalist politics and is seeking a rare third term as a country's leader. People began queuing up at polling stations hours before they were allowed in at about 7 a.m. in the first 21 states to hold votes from the Himalayan mountains to the tropical and Daman islands. Nearly 970 million voters, more than 10 percent of the world's population, will elect 543 members to the lower house of parliament for the five years during the staggered elections that run until June 1. The votes will be counted on June 4, and this election is seen as one of the most consequential in India's history 
and would test the limits of Modi's political dominance. And now let's take a look at sports. Uh, well, the sport minister, John Ennor, has said that the new Super Eagles head coach will be unveiled in the next two weeks. The position has remained vacant since the expiration of Joseph Pizarro's contract at the end of February. The technical committee of the Niger Football Federation, NFF, has reportedly shortlisted three coaches for the top job and also said that the NFF has taken their time to do a thorough job making sure the Super Eagles qualify for the World Cup after a poor start. The Super Eagles, it will be recalled, drew their first two World Cup qualifiers with Lesotho and Zimbabwe last December. And that brings us to the end of the news hour. News updates rather at this time. For more, follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for watching and please stay tuned to Trust Television.